Well, first of all, I think to get to, to get it started, we should all cheers because CV and I were drinking German beer, and in Germany you say Prost, not cheers, Prost. So I think that's appropriate. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So why don't you you know introduce yourself a little bit and tell me tell us a brief your, your brief uh, background, like a quick summary. Yeah. Uh, well, we've been here for about three and a half years. I own this with my partner John. Um, uh, I was an Air Force veteran, that's how I got out here. Uh, I was in the Air Force for six years in Tucson and came up here, did commercial design for a little bit and then this sounded fun so we started chipping away at it. It took us a couple years but uh, yeah, we opened this up and built this out. You said yeah. three and a half years, right? Just in time for COVID. <laughs> oh, yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. How'd yeah. you, how you deal with that? Um, oh, we, we did a lot of grants, but we applied for a lot of stuff and um, just worked. Work, work, work. How, how has it gone in general? Successful place, you would say? We, I, I would say I am very pleased to say that we are back to pre-COVID levels, such as they were, uh, as far as our metrics. So, so it kind of leveled out again, and now we're trying to pass those. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I always admire business owners and people just that people that start their business because they, I feel like there are always two types of people: people that are always talking about starting their own business and saying, "Ah, I might start it and I want to start it," but you know, actually, people that, that are just doing it and going for it, I, I always admire it. But well, what would be your advice to to people who are like maybe in between debating on on starting something? Um, break it down into small pieces. Uh, you know, just, just figure out how you can take one bite at a time and, and figure that out and figure out sort of what you need to tackle first. Yeah. And then just start chipping away at it. Like, nothing happens overnight. You've just got to be more stubborn than whatever you're going after. Do you think being a vet, that can have prepared you to, to open your business? Just like the mindset of, of uh, going for it and being organized? A little bit. It definitely, uh, it, you don't really have any bad days after that kind of experience. So, yeah, you just, uh, you can take everything in stride. Awesome. How was it being in the Air Force? That's cool. It have was, you seen the new Top Gun movie? Like, it was good. I have not. I have not. Not yet. You've not seen yet. the first one, right? Oh, well, yes, of yeah. course. Yeah. It's yeah. almost required you reading. Watch, you should watch the new one. I thought it was very good. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I'm no Air Force uh, guy, but... I mean, F-16's fun, good. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, just... Uh, it was good. A uh, good life experience. Um, got to travel a little bit. Uh, uh, and it was interesting sort of to see how that all works, you know, how the, how the mechanism works. So. Well, yeah, I, I grew up in Germany and I came to the, the US was 19. And when we were already talking about beer, for me, the biggest cultural shock, I would say, is that I was able to legally drink beer since I was 16 in Germany. Okay. So I came here, was 19, and I couldn't even buy a Bud Light at the gas station. But it's just for always two, for a... two more years. Yeah, for yeah. two more years. So that's always a story I tell people just to understand the cultural differences a little bit, because I came here as an adult, as a man, and I wasn't even able to, to buy a beer anywhere. Yeah. So that's always a story for me. And yeah, I, I went to school in Ohio. Uh, played played college soccer there. Uh, played three years for FC Cincinnati. Lived a little bit in Louisville, Kentucky, and, and now I'm here in Arizona. Yeah. So our locker room, if you look at our locker room, we're all like from from we're this diverse group of people from all over the place. And you know this guy. Different yeah. yeah. I was from far so, away. So let's uh, circle back to your Air Force days a little bit. Um, mm. It is Pride Pride Month, um, yes. and I'm kind of enthusiastic about that topic and not to touch too much on your sexuality but, uh, but how was that did you have any issues with it well uh i was in during don't ask don't tell so okay. it was kind of one of those things where uh the less said about it the better at the time uh so that's kind of uh what that was at that time uh i hear now through the grapevine that it's, it's much different and mm -hmm. it's a lot easier for people mm -hmm. so that's that's good that you know everything moved in the right direction but it was it was very tricky and you did need to sort of know who you could talk to and, and who you could trust and who you could. How many years ago was it? Uh, I got out in 2007 so it was 2001 to 2007. It's not that long ago. No it's not. <laughs> I find it actually really interesting because I feel like you're a veteran so you were in the army were soccer players and I started playing soccer over 20 years ago so even in 20 years a lot of has changed but in soccer, LGBTQ was never really talked about. It was a taboo topic. You you weren't Still supposed, kind of yeah, you you weren't yeah. supposed to, you know, be anything else than what you see on TV. A little bit, you know. And so I think it's really interesting that you come from that background. And and you know, so yeah, tell me a little bit about that. How how was that for you? That experience coming from or like being in the army, 
and then just like maybe feeling that you weren't really welcome everywhere where you go. Well, I, I, I also grew up in a very small town in the Midwest, and yeah, so a uh, uh, port here on Michigan. Okay. And so it was kind of the same thing there, a point here on a population of about 6,000 people, and I didn't know anybody that was gay. So numerically, that's kind of impossible. Yeah. We're, we're around 10%, yeah. give or take. And so, you know, you kind of learn how to read the room. And so I grew up with that, yeah. kind of. And so when I joined the military, I was like, okay, I, uh, it's the same thing. I just, you know, um, but it did allow me to sort of get out of my hometown, become financially independent, and maybe move somewhere that was a little better. And so that's, that's I saw that as sort of an avenue for that. Uh, yeah. What about this place? Do you do anything special this month? Anything um, in we're, we're trying to get everything uh, lined up, and I don't have anything on the books yet, but uh, I did want to, we actually sponsor a gay, uh, a gay softball team called Vintage, uh, it's 40 and up, and uh, one of their wives uh, does drag, so we were going to do it like a drag bingo or two to help raise money for them. Um, so we're trying to uh, figure out where we can schedule that. Yeah. Yeah. What did we get here? We got some German stuff. It's a it's a dunkel it's a dunkel uh, Hefeweizen. Okay. Very good. And Weinstefana is a very uh, well known well known um, label of beer. Yeah, obviously, you're an athlete, so you're not an expert on beers. But what are we, what are we drinking here? <laughs> He, he, he got it absolutely right. It is it is a dunkel, so that's going to be a, it's a it's a darker wheat beer, right? That's basically yeah. it. And so uh, the brewery, the Weisschwanger Brewery, is actually the world's oldest continuously operating brewery. They've been around since 1040. It was considered a cultural heritage site during the World War II, so uh, it made it through that. And um, uh, it's it's really great. Actually, their you know their standard Hefeweizen is probably one of my favorite beers. You know, you get a little bit of that clove and a little bit of almost like a bubble gum finish on it, uh, and that's all because of the yeast. They they don't put flavorings in it. It's all just side product from actual the yeast fermentation. So, uh, if you want to know how to make very surgically precise beers, you know. Just talk to the Germans. The yeah. biggest difference between beer in Germany and beer in the US is that Germany has a Reinheitsgebot. It's, yeah. a, it's a, a purity law that you mm -hmm. translating. Yeah. It's a purity law that exactly um, tells breweries what they can put in their beer and what yeah. your ingredients is and the, the water to wheat uh, percentage whatsoever. And, and uh, that just makes the beer a little bit more flavorful. And America doesn't have it as much, so there's a little bit more room for interpretation. Yeah. But uh, I think that's the biggest difference yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't i don't know much about beer but i'm kind of from a viking background uh, geographically at least um so this might be a dumb question and you might know this but uh, you know we did a chairs or a skull as i like to call it you know where that comes from close you know where that comes from actually the physical thing of doing that uh no no it comes from the viking times a little ah. story time here so sure say that a different tribe came to visit our tribe viking tribe mm. and we would invite them over for a beer, or like we would, we would say, do you want to have a beer with us? For them to know that we hadn't poisoned that, that beer that we were given to them. Oh yes, we I do remember this. We hit those glasses so hard together and that the beer would mix. Over from one to another, and if the host drank first, you would know it's not poison, so you could drink yourself. So that's my take on beer, that's pretty much all I do. The, uh, the, the tapping on the countertop after you cheers, ah. that's actually from taverns in Old England. Uh, so, you know, traveling by stagecoach and things, and people were very superstitious back in the day. So ghosts of people that died on the journey, you know, would stay in the woods. And so they would think that bad energy was basically following them. So they would get to the tavern and they would cheers and then they would touch the bar top because wood is grounding. And it's basically sort of canceling negative energy that would have been following them so they get to start fresh the following day, uh, release all the, uh, the bad stuff and leave it in the past. I didn't know that. I thought that was an American thing. No, no, no. That's definitely older than American. Okay, very good. When we lose a game, <laughs> at, the, at the tap, drink a beer, leave it behind us and then we go again for sure, yeah. Good, yeah. good advice, yeah. Yeah, no. You live and you learn, huh? Absolutely. Learn something new every day. Cheers.